guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be making the mystery part or the mystery parts. So I've got a bit of a job to make and I'm going to keep what it actually is a bit of a secret just for now and it's something that we'll be developing over a period of time but there's going to be some, let's call it quite delicate machining to do on this particular part, some quite small parts to make and some run and repeat parts so sort of lots of repeat parts so there's going to be some repeat setups and things like that which I've not really done any of yet in this workshop at least so there's going to be some thinking around how can we batch parts up how can we do them more efficiently and things like that so I'll show you what we're starting off with so we've got some we've got some brass so this is a bit of brass strip 5 eighths 5 eighths thickness this way, 5 eighths of an inch, 15.8 millimetres. It's about an eighth thick or 3 millimetres thick. And what we need to do for a start is my dimension this way needs to finish up at about 8 millimetres. So we've got a good 6 or 7 mil to come off this. Now I could just mill all of that off. I've got four of these probably to do at this length. So this is a foot long 300 mil long so that's a lot of wasted brass at that point so I think what we're going to do and you'll see I've blued this up and I've scribed the line on it we're going to have a go with the bandsaw in the vertical mode on the new vertical bandsaw table and see if we can salvage just a small piece of brass and it will be small I'll probably with the thickness of the the blade on the bandsaw I'm probably going to end up with five millimeters or something like that of brass but far better to have that in the small sort of scrap bin you know you never know when something like that may come in handy rather than just turning it into swarf so I'll bring you back at the bandsaw in a minute and we'll set it up for the vertical mode and we'll give it a go and see how it cuts okay guys so I'm just going to set the bandsaw up for vertical mode I thought I'd show this because I've not really shown I've shown the vertical table that I've made for the bandsaw but I've not shown how simple it is to set it up so we'll just do that now so Got my vertical table, we know it's all set ready. We'll slide that into the blade, drop it into the vise, onto the foot at the bottom, close the vise up. And that's it, that's us ready to ready to cut vertical so nice and sturdy Fairly successful. It's interesting to see what's happened to that bit of brass. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but I never thought that would happen. That's gone. There's a five millimeter gap under the center of that. So just in cutting that down there, the stress relieving the stresses that were in that brass has made that relief by that much. Right then guys, it's fair to say that we've made a bit of a mess of this with this bowing that's happened on this bit of brass. So I'm having to change the way I'm going to make these bits 
So you can see what I've done there is blued this up and I've marked out my individual parts. So the next job is to, and I was going to have to do this at some point anyway, but I was going to do this later in the manufacture. But as it's turned out, I'm going to have to do it at the start of the manufacture. So we're going to cut these up into separate pieces and you can see my scribe lines there. And that's just going to be a in the vise with a hacksaw job. It won't take long because it's brass. So I'll just show you a little bit of that and then we'll go on to the milling machine. That's one done. I'll bring you back when I've finished. Alright then guys, we've got all our pieces cut to length. I've got ten of them stacked in the vise. Not perfectly ideal, but I'm right down in the vise. Minimum amount of material showing and all I'm going to be doing is whispering this top face to get a clean up. I've 28 of these to do all together. And in this pack of ten, I know I've got the shortest two width wise. So, and dimensions largely unimportant on this I just need to make sure that they're all the same dimension so I'm going to go down until I've cleaned this face up and then I've got my setting at that point in Z and then I'll put the other pack of 10 in and then a pack of 8 and then that's that's all of them done all to the same height so three three quick setups to whisper that top face it's actually not much longer in time than it would have been if I'd have tried to do it in long lengths which is what I was originally going to do because there would have been screw jacks to faff around with underneath to you know support the whole length and all the rest of it so the fact I've had to go this way round cutting them to length first is not really not really a, a, a big time hindrance really in the, in the grand scheme of things so I'll bring you back in a minute and we'll whisper this top face off Right then guys, I'm finishing all these to length now. You can see I've got the the new vice stop set up with the pin running through the vice right on top of a parallel that's sat in the vice and basically just feeding these in one at a time. I'm only finishing one end because I'm only interested in the dimension across the centre part. So it's as simple as that, up to the stop and then we'll just mill it off. Right then guys, next job I'm going to use the same setup, same parallel, same vice stop in the same position but this time I need to know where it all is. So what I've done is just slid a ground block in up to the stop and I'm going to use my edge finder to find my x axis and my y axis and set that on the DRO. So we do that now. Hi 
guys the next job on these I've got three holes initially to put in these so I've got my setup as you've just seen using the ground block I know where my zeros are so I've zeroed out I've got my dimensions worked out I've written a value on the top of the vice that I'm working to in X so this is going to be a bit of a laborious job so I'm obviously not going to film all of it I'm sure you don't want to watch me do this 28 times I'm not quite sure I want to watch me do this 28 times if I'm honest but so be it I'm just going to nip the vice up parallel out Right guys, next setup on these is on the two outer holes I need to put a cone or a chamfer. I'm using a spot drill, it's an approximate angle for what I need, not important, So, uh, but the depth is important so that we're not breaking through or breaking out the sides. So I've got my setup, I'll just show you one of them and then I'll crack on with the rest of them off camera. There we go, just another 27 to do like that and then I'll bring you back at the next operation. Right then guys, there we go, there's 28 done. Didn't, it was, I've timed myself, it was about just about a minute over half an hour, something like that. So they're about a minute a piece per operation at the minute. So yeah, there's a bit of time involved in this. I could have gone s several different ways around doing this set of operations but I was really leaded by the way this material stress relieves when I bandsawed it at the start and because I bandsawed one of them that way if I'd have wanted then to mill the second one and I got a different set of operations it would have just made it even more complicated so I just followed through with the same thing so next job and you'll see I've split these into two sets of 14 now so this is where they're going to become different from each other so on half of them the centre hole is going to get an M3 thread through them and on the other half the centre hole is going to get an M3 clearance hole. Now typically with brass, brass grabs and you should always grind your tools with a negative rake when machining brass really, especially drills to stop them pulling in and, what, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And this is more so more more important than ever when you have got a smallish or any size hole, but then you put another drill down it that is very similar in size but only slightly bigger. That's that they will grab. I mean brass will grab any time, but if you're not taking a solid cut through the middle, there's nothing supporting the point of the drill, which will then mean it's more likely to grab and pull itself in. So what I've done is I've just reground this drill and I don't know whether this is going to show up or not so I've just hand ground it as a normal a normal drill grind and then what I've done is I've used the oil stone and I've got an oil stone with a real fine edge on it here and basically what I've done is I've held the drill in my hand like that and then I've basically gone in there and you can see the angle of the stone to the angle of the drill so I'm actually dulling for want of a better word that cutting edge and I've done that on both flutes 
just a, a quick rub with oil stone like that and what you get I don't know whether the camera will show it up or not I'll try and bring it in I don't know whether this will show up I can't really see on the screen but you should be able to see a wear, a wear edge if you want to call it that or a yeah, you know, an edge where I've taken the the sharp edge off. So we'll give that a try. It's always a bit of. You might have to do this two or three times to get it right. On a big drill, you can actually use the the grinder to get in and just grind. But on a drill this big, on a on a grinder, it's really difficult. So oil stone's the best way. So join you back at the mill, and we'll start. I think we're going to do the tapped ones first. So we'll crack on with those first. I'll show you one of those, and then I'll bring you back and show you one of the clearance holes. And then there's one more operation to do on these bits before we move on to the next bits of the mystery project. Alright guys, we're set up for tapping. And you know the beauty of this setup is this is the third setup now, all at the same setup. My DRO is still set and I'm still working to the same numbers, so it's dead easy. And so we're just gonna start tapping these now. This is an M3 tap, it's a machine tap and we'll we're running at 170 rpm nice and slow see how we get on and because this machine won't reverse well it will the machine will reverse but the three phase converter doesn't allow me to do that the way it supplies the power it will run in either forward or reverse once it's got going but it doesn't do a change of direction so I'm just taking these out by hand there we go that's got that tap so a few more to do like that and then we'll do the second setup for the clearance hole on the other half right guys we've done with all the tapped holes we're just putting the clearance holes in now in the other half of the parts so we'll just do the first one of those I can actually feel that I was pushing that drill through there and that's because of that work that I did with the with the oil stone so is that going to focus? no, too zoomed in there you go, that's got the first one with the clearance hole in but yeah, as I said I can feel it I'm actually pushing the drill through rather than trying to resist it pulling itself through as it's grabbing and that's just by stoning that that sharp cutting edge off so handy tip for anyone cutting brass I'll bring you back when I've got all of them done to this standard so guys the key to successful brass drill grinding is not to forget when you're finished go back and re-grind the drill before you put it back in your box otherwise next time you pull it out to drill steel it won't cut very well at all so I've just pop that back on the grinder and just clean that back up to get rid of those stoned edges so I'll bring you back at the mill ready for the next operation All right, then guys we're at the last operation on these last machining operation which is a countersink on the back of these center holes I've just put in the clearance hole on the M3 and I can't reset up on the mill with these because these parts are so small well, I could reset up on the mill but it would mean I've got to faff around with different parallels and I would then have to reset up my setup on the mill and re-zero and all that so we're going to do it on the pillar drill so here's a bit of a tip if you're doing small parts like this do not try and hold them with your fingers use a piece of wood just chuck it on and hopefully if the wood's slightly uneven like this is if you chuck it on over a slightly uneven bit that will grip to countersink it and I'll just show you that So 
there you go, nice and easy, nice and safe. The worst that's going to do is spin round and round and round. No harm done to fingers or machine or tool. So nice and easy, just use a bit of wood. Like you can see there, I've, I've obviously done something else with this and it's got a bit of an uneven surface just here. And it's just that bit of unevenness that bites into the bottom of the part. So I'll get them all done to that standard and then I'll bring you back uh, for the final operation which will be a bit of handwork on these and then that's these parts complete. Right then guys, next job on these is I want a radius on these four corners on the externals. Radius size really unimportant, finish unimportant, consistency unimportant. This is just for clearance on the final application. I was thinking about setting these up on the mill to do but that would have been quite a lengthy procedure so I'm just using the good old Woolies Dremel and just eyesighting the radiuses on the corner so I'll show you one of those now Now if I had a disc sander or a belt sander that would be obviously the best way of doing it. I don't have either of those things so the closest I've got is that Dremel. So that's that operation and other than a bit of just deep general deburring now which I'll not film just running around with a file taking any sharp edges off those corners I've just created and just re-checking the holes to make sure I've pushed no burrs over into these holes at the end that's it for these particular bits on the mystery part all right then guys that's the end of the first bits of the assembly of the mystery job complete there's bits of these that are accurate where they need to be such as the pitching of the holes and the spacings and there's bits of these that aren't so accurate where it doesn't matter and it doesn't need to be few interesting setups there not saying the arrangement or pattern that they're laid out in on the bench is anything to do with the final product but it could be and so what we've got there is 14 of one type with an m3 hole through the center and 14 of another type with clearance on an m3 thread so I'll just bring you back at the bench and we'll close this episode off so there we go guys that's the end of the first episode of the mystery project and I hope that was a little bit different some batch work some repeat setups some sort of very small piece parts machining operations and some incredible amount of stress relief um, on the initial brass bar which was a bit of a learning curve for me and but we managed to work around that no problem at all so we've got all the bits I need for the for the first bit we will probably do more of the mystery part build up over the next few weeks this is going to take some time there's quite a lot of bits required for this so it's going to take some time to pull together and at some point it will all become clear what this is and at that point I will then be renaming these episodes actually what it actually is so that if anybody else is searching for that kind of thing on YouTube it will show up and maybe help somebody else out who wants to make something similar. So I'll leave it there for now guys so <laughs> a bit of a strange one but uh, I'll, all will be revealed at some point so thank you all for watching. Thank you all as usual for subscribing and we'll catch you all very soon on another episode when we'll be making something else.